Uh oh, cancel culture has come to TikTok, except this time they're canceling left wingers. Why? We're gonna bring in an expert to talk about it. Jessica Burbank is an analyst, she's a content creator. She's gotten her uh, videos blocked or censored on uh, TikTok. She's also a data and analytics manager at People's Action. Jessica, uh, welcome to the conversation. Thank you, thanks for having me on, good to be here. Uh, no problem. Okay, so what in the world did they block on TikTok for you? It's been quite a few things. It started with just a comment where I commented on my own video and said to someone, don't call me a capitalist, ew. And that violated community guidelines. And they didn't really specify which community guidelines that violated. And from there, it's really escalated to them preventing my videos from getting uploaded, having just like videos about American intervention getting completed, completely taken down. Uh, videos on a series that I do uh, called Men Annoy Women, uh, taken down for hate speech. Uh, oh. Videos about teaching critical race theory in Virginia, getting taken down for harassment and bullying, and even getting blocked from going live. So the, it looks like there's a couple of different issues there. Um, so my guess is that on the uh, women uh, being annoyed at men video, can I uh, guess that it was? Uh, really angry, hateful right wing men who reported you as against the community guidelines. Is that is that fair guess? That's the working theory is that they're very organized online and are mass reporting the content. Okay, so at least I understand that it's absurd, absurd. And all these tough guys, oh, liberals are uh, snowflakes. Oh my gosh, she's something bad, a <laughs> reporter. Okay, so. There's some uh, great irony in that. Let's note that and move on. Uh, but if it's like trolls that are finding a loophole in the system, okay, that's one thing. If it's the company itself that's saying, did you just say there's something wrong with capitalism? Censor her. That's a different thing. So do we have any indication in that that's what's happening in some of the videos? Yeah, I mean, when I did this series on the American intervention in Guatemala, a video was blocked from getting uploaded that discussed in great detail the connections between the foreign policy establishment and United Fruit Company. And it's not really clear what phrasing triggered the algorithm to prevent that video from ever getting uploaded. But it's pretty clear that they're scraping the text for something if they can catch it before it even goes live. Before it even goes live. So that eliminates the possibility that it was trolls. So right, it does. Okay, now, now that's significant evidence. Uh, I saw in one of the notes that the, they said you had violated the guidelines on quote, content that counters generally accepted beliefs. Wait, do we all have to believe the things that are generally accepted, whether they're true or untrue? So I get it if they say, oh, okay, well, look, it's generally accepted to believe that ivermectin is to treat tapeworm, but it is not to treat coronavirus. Well, that's generally accepted among scientists and doctors and is related to your health. So I could see generally accepted beliefs being relevant there. But generally accepted beliefs that capitalism is awesome and you don't agree <laughs> is not a, I didn't think was a thing, but apparently it is a thing. And in the story about the coup in Guatemala, well, but that actually happened. Uh, I actually saw part of your video on that and the part I saw was 100% factual. So do they ever clarify to you? Because it would be one thing if they say, okay, you know what? We think you misinterpreted a fact or we think you got that fact completely wrong and here's our fact check, etc. It would be another thing if they say, yeah, I mean, you're right, but we just generally don't accept your beliefs. Exactly, everything I talk about is evidenced in CIA documents from the National Security Archives. So it's all true, but are these generally accepted beliefs? No, because do we teach American intervention history in schools? Many people are not aware of this history that we have. And TikTok even went so far as to include in the most recent update to their written community guidelines, this quote that they don't allow conspiratorial, conspiratorial content that counters generally accepted beliefs and cast blame on a group or entity rather than any living individual. So if I talk about the foreign policy establishment and multinational corporations interests abroad and that being a motivation for CIA activity abroad or American intervention, suddenly that violates the community guidelines and this platform where I built a following is not something I can use to discuss this anymore. So, I mean, we now built in several different absurdities, right? So. 
One of right. them is if you offend anyone, including the bad guys, we're going to ban you. But wait a minute, they did a coup. I can't criticize the coup against a democratically elected leader. I'm casting aspersions on a long dead CIA agent from decades ago. Are you serious or is this a joke, right? I mean, that's absurd. Then under that philosophy, we would never be able to criticize the government. Oh, there it is. Um, so, uh, and then there's the second absurdity, Jessica. And this is a story we covered just a couple of days ago on, on TYT. Um, they said that somebody saying that uh, inflation is corporate price gouging because they still are very profitable companies. So they're choosing to raise prices on you. And Instagram did a fact check on that and said, no, be careful. Uh, you should read the AFP fact check on this. Corporations uh, by raising prices didn't actually raise them. It's not their fault. No, but now wait a minute. Now your fact check is lying. <laughs> so that's a whole different layer here. No, it was definitely corporations who raised the prices. It could be our opinion on price gouging. There's a number of factors. But our opinion is not allowed, our facts not allowed. So Jessica, that's a long way of asking you, has anyone from TikTok or any of these other platforms ever reached out to you and given you a real explanation why the things you're stating, which are actually completely factual, are being taken down? No, no explanation from TikTok. You get a violation and they'll give you a notification explaining which of the community guidelines it violates. Sometimes it'll just say hate speech and you can submit an appeal and they review it and it goes live again. And that's a really good tool if you're getting mass reported for them to reinstate the content, but it still disrupts your feed. And it's really interesting, the point about inflation, because you have people like Daniel Tarullo, the former Fed chair, even saying that the Fed has no working theory of inflation. So can we expect Instagram or TikTok to have a working theory of inflation and then take content down if it doesn't fit that when economists don't even agree on it? It's really ridiculous how much power these people have over the public discourse and essentially the public square with TikTok being the most visited online destination and just no transparency for the creator. So Jessica, now let's tackle the hardest question, which is what do you do with actual lies of the right wing? Because I remember when they started putting notes on the right wing stuff, I said, look, that's good because those are clear lies. We can prove to you and we do prove to you on the show that they're lies. And and it definitely affects the public health, etc. right? But I said, be careful because once you open that door, then they're gonna apply it and to, everyone else and most especially progressives because we're the most against corporate rule, right? And and corporations are gonna wanna take over these platforms like they did with mainstream media because they're not manufacturing news, they're manufacturing consent. So now we have to go back to the original question then. So what should they have done with right wing propaganda online? Because if you open the door, it's a terrible door. But if you don't open the door, then they could lie about anything they want and endanger people's lives. Exactly, yeah, it's really difficult. We don't want them to just take down any content that they consider extreme because we know that they consider even very factual things about CIA intervention to be extreme. And it puts us in a really dangerous place of we don't have a public sphere for communications or public discourse where we can exchange ideas that's not controlled by a corporation. And so I'm not sure, I think it's a really big question. How do we democratically control a place for online public discourse? It's not a question I think I have the answer to. I think a lot of people are going to need to contribute to that. But certainly I think everyone can agree that having these corporations have full control over what information and ideas live or dies is ridiculous and it feels really dystopian. Yeah, um, look, I think that if they stuck to facts and they had, you know, not a perfect system, but one that works, you know, 90% of the time and, and, they, and by the way, that applies equally. Unlike the right wing, we're 100% principled. So if you found a left winger, who was making up stuff, yeah, of course you should take that down, right? Especially if it involves public health, etc., right? But we're saying things that are provable. There's, there's no, and and look, and if, by the way, so the, and you, should you take down right wing opinions? No, hell no. So for example, the right wing comically believes that the system was rigged by immigrants. 
the guy who crossed the border without a dollar in his pocket somehow rigged the system, but not the multi-billion dollar banker who gave money to Donald Trump and the Republican Party. Now that is the most insane thing I've ever heard, but that's their opinion. I wouldn't take that down, right? Uh, only if you're saying something that is obviously and demonstrably false. So, but corporations got a corporate. Uh, so here we are. Uh, one more uh, question about that, Jessica. Since this is cancel culture, and uh, I hear about cancel culture all the time on cable news. Uh, Bill Maher is obsessed with it. Joe Rogan's obsessed with it. So you've been all over cable news, and they're talking about cancel culture against the left, right? I mean, yeah, that's not what we really hear. I really like Cornell West's take on this, which is, you know, we don't necessarily need to cancel ideas. What we need to do is get people to recognize their shared humanity if we're ever going to bridge the gaps between people. Uh, and this this sort of regulation where the solution is to just silence people removes our ability to even have conversations about these things. Uh, and that's exactly what we need to bridge the gap. So that's really concerning. I think, you know, as content creators, we have to think about what power do we have? We are the product that TikTok is selling essentially. Without people making content, there would be nothing on, on the app. So what power do we have essentially as workers uh, to maybe withhold our labor in creating content and demand something better than what's going on? That's interesting. All right, I wanna end on one quick thing. So what you are a data and analytics manager for people's action. What is people's action? Uh, People's Action is where I work. It's just a, a group of uh, community organizing nonprofits from around the country. And so I help them with their organizing and do a lot of data and analytics. Um, and we do things like create algorithms for better voter targeting. Um, and that's been really interesting because TikTok runs off of an algorithm. So trying to figure out how that works with my background in data and analytics has been really interesting. The black box of machine learning is exactly that, but having more visibility into it would be very cool. Uh, but yeah, analyzing the data and analytics on TikTok and and taking that expertise, you know, to my social media has been interesting as well. All right, uh, Jessica, uh, where can people find you if they can find you? Uh, people can find me on TikTok for now. Uh, they can find me on Twitter, and I'm going to start a series on American intervention on YouTube as well. All right, there you go. We've had good luck with uh, YouTube. I think they're generally fair. So let's hope that holds. Um, all right, yeah. Jessica Burbank, everybody check her out, uh, unless she's being censored. Um, okay, thank you for joining us, Jessica. <laughs> thank you. And you'll never be censored here. Thank you. No problem. Thanks for watching The Young Turks. I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all of that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.